Act Three of the History of Troilus and Cressida by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One Troy, Priam's Palace. Music sounds within. Enter Pandarus and a servant. Friend, you, pray you, a word. Do you not follow the young Lord Paris? I, sir, when he goes before me. You depend upon him, I mean. Sir, I do depend upon the Lord. You depend upon a noble gentleman. I must needs praise him. The Lord be praised. You know me, do you not? Faith, sir, superficially. Friend, know me better. I am the Lord Pandarus. I hope I shall know your honour better. I do desire it. You are in the state of grace? Grace? Not so, friend. Honour and lordship are my titles. What music is this? I do but partly know, sir. It is music in parts. Know you the musicians? Holy, sir. Who play they to? To the hearers, sir. At whose pleasure, friend? At mine, sir, and theirs that love music. Uh, command, I mean, friend. Who shall I command, sir? Friend, we understand not one another. I am too courtly, and thou art too cunning. At whose request? do these men play that's to it indeed sir marry sir at the request of paris my lord who is there in person with him the mortal venus the heart-blood of beauty love's invisible soul who oh, my cousin cressida no sir helen could you not find that out by her attributes it should seem a fellow that thou hast not seen the lady cressida I come to speak with Paris from the Prince Troilus. I will make a complimental assault upon him for my business seeds. Sod in business, there's a stewed phrase indeed. Enter Paris and Helen, attended. Fair be to you, my lord, and to all this fair company. Fair desires, in all fair measures, fairly guide them. Especially to you, fair queen, fair thoughts be your fair pillow dear lord you are full of fair words you speak your fair pleasure sweet queen fair prince here is good broken music you have broken it cousin and by my life you shall make it whole again you shall piece it out with a piece of your performance he is full of harmony truly lady no oh sir rude in sooth in good sooth very rude well said my lord well you say so in fits i have business to my lord dear queen my lord will you vouchsafe me a word nay this shall not hatch us out we'll hear you sing certainly well sweet queen you are pleasant with me but marry thus my lord my dear lord and most esteemed friend your brother troilus my lord pandarus honey sweet lord <laughs> go to sweet queen go to commends himself most affectionately to you you shall not bob us out of our melody if you do our melancholy upon your head sweet queen sweet queen that's a sweet queen if faith and to make a sweet lady sad is a sour offence nay that shall not serve your turn that shall it not in truth la nay i care not for such words no no and my lord he desires you that if the king call him for supper you will make his excuse my lord pandarus what says my sweet queen my very very sweet queen what exploits in hand where sups he to-night nay but my lord 
What says my sweet queen? My cousin will fall out with you. You must not know where he sucks. I'll lay my life with my disposer, Cressida. No, no, no such matter. You are wide. Come, your disposer is sick. Well, I'll make excuse. Aye, good my lord, why should you say Cressida? No, your poor disposer's sick. I spy. You spy? What do you spy? Come, give me an instrument. Now, sweet queen. Why, this is kindly done. My niece is horribly in love with the thing you have, sweet queen. She shall have it, my lord. <laughs> if it be not my lord paris he no she'll none of him they two are twain falling in after falling out may make them three come come i'll hear no more of this i'll sing you a song now ay ay prithee now by my troth sweet lord thou hast a fine forehead ay you may you may let thy song be love oh, this love will undo us all oh cupid 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 love ay that it shall live faith ay good now love love nothing but love in good truth it begins so <coughs> nothing but love still love still more for o love's bow shoots buck and doe this shaft confounds not that it wounds but tickles still the sore these lovers cry ho oh, oh, ho they die yet that which seems the wound to kill doth turn ho ho to ha ha he so dying love lives still ho ho a while but ha 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 ho ho groans out for ha 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 hey ho in love in faith to the very tip of the nose he eats nothing but doves love and that breeds hot blood and hot blood begets hot thoughts and hot thoughts beget hot deeds and hot deeds is love is this the generation of love hot blood hot thoughts and hot deeds why they are vipers is love a generation of vipers sweet lord who's a field to-day oh hector deophobus helenus antenor and all the gallantry of troy i would fain have armed to-day but my nell would not have it so how chance my brother troilus went not he hangs the lip at something you know all lord pandarus not i honey sweet queen i long to hear how they spend to-day you'll remember your brother's excuse <laughs> to a hair farewell sweet queen commend me to your niece i will sweet queen exit sound a retreat there come from the field let us to priam's hall to greet the warriors sweet helen i must woo you to help and arm our hector his stubborn buckles with these your white enchanting fingers touched shall more obey than to the edge of steel or force of greekish sinews you shall do more than all the island kings disarm great hector twill make us proud to be his servant paris yea what he shall receive of us in duty gives us more palm in beauty than we have yea overshines ourself sweet above thought i love thee exeunt scene two troy pandarus orchard and a pandarus and troilus boy meeting 
how now where's thy master at my cousin cressida's no sir he stays for you to conduct him thither enter troilus oh uh, here he comes how now how now sirrah walk off exit boy have you seen my cousin no pandarus i stalk about her door like a strange soul upon the stygian banks staying for waftage oh be thou my charon and give me swift transportance to these fields where i may wallow in the lily beds proposed for the deserver o oh, gentle pander from cupid's shoulder pluck his painted wings and fly with me to cressid walk here in the orchard i'll bring her straight exit <sighs> i am giddy expectation whirls me round the imaginary relish is so sweet that it enchants my sense. What will it be when that the watery palate tastes indeed love's thrice repure nectar? Death, I fear me, sounding destruction, or some joy too fine, too subtle potent, tuned too sharp in sweetness for the capacity of my ruder powers. I fear it much and i do fear besides that i shall lose distinction in my joys as doth a battle when they charge on heaps the enemy flying re-enter pandarus mm, she's making her ready she'll come straight you must be witty now she does so blush and fetches her wind so short as if she were frayed with her sprite i fetch her it is the prettiest villain she fetches her breath as short as a new tin sparrow exit even such a passion doth embrace my bosom my heart beats thicker than a feverous pulse and all my powers do their bestowing lose like vassalage at unawares encountering the eye of majesty re-enter pandarus with cressida come come what need you blush shame's a baby here she is now swear the oath now to her that you have sworn to me what are you gone again you must be watched ere you be made tame must you come your ways come your ways and you draw backward we'll put you in the fills why do you not speak to her come draw this curtain and let's see your picture alas the day how loath you are to offend the daylight and to a dark you'd close sooner so so rub on and kiss the mistress how now a kiss in fee farm build there carpenter the air is sweet nay you shall fight your hearts out ere i part you the falcon as the tersel but all the ducks in the river go to go to you have bereft me of all words lady hmm. words pay no debts give her deeds but she'll bereave you at the deeds too if she call your activity in question what billing again here's in witness whereof the parties interchangeably come in come in i'll go get a fire exit will you walk in my lord oh cressid how often have i wished me thus wished my lord the gods grant oh my lord what should they grant what makes this pretty abruption what too curious drag espies my sweet lady in the fountain of our love more drags than water if my fears have eyes fears make devils of cherubins they never see truly blind fear that seeing reason leads finds safer footing than blind reason stumbling without fear to fear the worst often cures the worse <sighs> let my lady apprehend no fear in all cupid's pageant there is presented no monster nor nothing monstrous neither nothing but our undertakings when we vow to weep seas live in fire eat rocks tame tigers thinking it harder for our mistress to devise in position enough than for us to undergo any difficulty imposed 
this is the monstrosity in love lady that the will is infinite and the execution confined that the desire is boundless and the act a slave to limit tastes say all lovers swear more performance than they are able and yet reserve an ability that they never perform vowing more than the perfection of ten and discharging less than the tenth part of one they that have the voice of lions and the act of hares are they not monsters <laughs> are they such such are not we praise us as we are tasted allow us as we prove our head shall go bare till merit crown it no perfection in reversion shall have a praise in present we will not name desert before his birth and being born his addition shall be humble few words to fair faith troilus shall be such to cresset as what envy can say worst shall be a mock for his truth and what truth can speak truest not truer than troilus will you walk in my lord re-enter pandarus what blushing still have ye not done talking yet well uncle what folly i commit i dedicate to you ha, i thank you for that if my lord get a boy of you you'll give him me be true to my lord if he flinch chide me for it you know now your hostages your uncle's word and my firm faith nay i'll give my word for her too our kindred though they be long ere they are wooed they are constant being one they are burrs i can tell you they'll stick where they are thrown boldness comes to me now and brings me heart prince troilus i have loved you night and day for many weary months why was my crescent then so hard to win hard to seem one but i was one my lord with the first glance that ever pardon me if i confess much you will play the tyrant i love you now but till now not so much but i might master it in faith i lie my thoughts were like unbridled children grown too headstrong for their mother oh, see we fools why have i blabbed who shall be true to us when we are so unsecret to ourselves but though i loved you well i wooed you not and yet good faith i wished myself a man or that we women had man's privilege of speaking first oh sweet bid me hold my tongue for in this rapture i shall surely speak the thing i shall repent see see your silence cunning in dumbness from my weakness draws my very soul of counsel oh, stop my mouth and shall albeit sweet music issues thence pretty ye faith my lord i do beseech you pardon me twas not my purpose thus to beg a kiss i am ashamed oh heavens what have i done for this time will i take my leave my lord you leave sweet crested leave and you take leave till to-morrow morning pray you content you what offends you lady sir mine own company you cannot shun yourself let me go and try i have a kind of self resides with you but an unkind self that itself will leave to be another's fool i would be gone where is my wit i know not what i speak well know they what they speak that speak so wisely perchance my lord i show more craft than love and fell so roundly to a large confession to anger for your thoughts but you are wise or else you love not for to be wise and love exceeds man's might that dwells with gods above <sighs> that i thought it could be in a woman as if it can i will presume in you to feed for aye her lamp and flames of love to keep a constancy in plight and youth outliving beauties outward with a mind that doth renew swifter than blood decays 
or that persuasion could but thus convince me that my integrity and truth to you might be affronted with the match and weight of such a winnowed purity and love how were i then uplifted but alas i am as true as truth's simplicity and simpler than the infancy of truth in that i'll war with you a virtuous fight when right with right wars who shall be most right true swains and love shall in the world to come approve their truth by troilus when their rhymes full of protest of oath and big compare want similes truth tired with iteration as true as steel as plantage to the moon as sun to-day as turtle to her mate as iron to adamant as earth to the centre yet after all comparisons of truth as truth's authentic author to be cited as true as troilus shall crown up the verse and sanctify the numbers prophet may you be if i be false or swerve a hair from truth when time is old and hath forgot itself when water drops have worn the stones of troy and blind oblivion swallowed cities up and mighty states characterless are grated to dusty nothing yet let memory from false to false among false maids in love upbraid my falsehood when they have said as false as air as water wind or sandy earth as fox to lamb or wolf to heifer's calf par to the hind or stepdame to her son yea let them say to stick the heart of falsehood as false as cressid go oh, jew a bargain maid seal it seal it i'll be the witness here i hold your hand here my cousins if ever you prove false one to another since i have taken such pains to bring you together let all pitiful goers between be called to the world's end after my name call them all pandas let all constant men be troiluses all false women cressids and all brokers between pandas say amen amen amen, amen. <laughs> whereupon i will show you a chamber and a bed which bed because it shall not speak of your pretty encounters press it to death away exeunt troilus and cressida <sighs> and cupid grant all tongue-tied maidens here bed chamber panda to provide this gear exit scene three the greek camp flourish enter agamemnon ulysses diomedes nestor ajax menelaus and calchas now princes for the service i have done the advantage of the time prompts me aloud to call for recompense appear it to your mind that through the sight i bear and things to come i have abandoned troy left my possession incurred a traitor's name exposed myself from certain and possessed conveniences to doubtful fortunes sequestering from me all that time acquaintance custom and condition they tame and most familiar to my nature and here to do you service and become as new into the world strange unacquainted i do beseech you as in way of taste to give me now a little benefit out of those many registered in promise which you say live to come in my behalf what wouldst thou of us troyan make demand you have a Trojan prisoner called Antina, yesterday took. Troy holds him very dear. Oft have you, often have you thanks, therefore, desired my crested in right great exchange, whom Troy hath still denied. But this Antina, I know, is such a rest in their affairs that their negotiations all must slack, wanting his manage they will almost give us the prince of blood a son of priam in change of him let him be sent great princes 
and he shall buy my daughter and her presence shall quite strike off all service i have done in most accepted pain let diomedes bear him and bring us cressid hither calchas shall have what he requests of us good diomed furnish you fairly for this interchange with all bring word if hector will to-morrow be answered in his challenge ajax is ready this shall i undertake and tis a burden which i am proud to bear exeunt diomedes and calchas achilles and patroclus stand in their tent achilles stands in the entrance of his tent please that our general pass strangely by him as if he were forgot and princes all lay negligent and loose regard upon him i will come last tis like he'll question me why such unplausive eyes are bent why turned on him if so i have derision medicinable to use between your strangeness and his pride which his own will shall have desire to drink it may do good pride hath no other glass to show itself but pride the supple knees feed arrogance and are the proud man's fees we'll execute your purpose and put on a form of strangeness as we pass along so do each lord and either greet him not or else disdainfully which shall shake him more than if not looked on i will lead the way what comes the general to speak with me you know my mind i'll fight no more against troy what says achilles would he aught with us uh, would you my lord aught with the general no nothing my lord the better exeunt agamemnon and nestor good day good day how do you how do you exit <sighs> what does the cuckold scorn me how now patroclus good morrow ajax ah good morrow ay and good next day too exit what mean these fellows know they not achilles they pass by strangely they were used to bend to send their smiles before them to achilles to come as humbly as they used to creep to holy altars what am i poor of late tis certain greatness once fallen out with fortune must fall out with men too what the declined is he shall as soon read in the eyes of others as feel in his own fall for men like butterflies show not their mealy wings but to the summer and not a man for being simply man hath any honour but honour for these honours that are without him as place riches and favour prizes of accident as oft as merit which when they fall as being slippery standers the love that leaned on them is slippery too doth one pluck down another and together die in the fall <laughs> but tis not so with me fortune and i are friends i do enjoy at ample point all that i did possess save these men's looks who do methinks find out something not worth in me such rich beholding as they have often given <sighs> here is ulysses i'll interrupt his reading how now ulysses now great thetis son what are you reading a strange fellow here writes me that a man how dearly ever parted how much in having or without or in cannot make boast to have that which he hath nor feels not what he owes but by reflection as when his virtues shining upon others heed them and they retort that heat again to the first giver this is not strange ulysses the beauty that is born here in the face the bear knows not that commends itself to others eyes nor doth the eye itself that most pure spirit of sense behold itself not going from itself but eye to eye opposed salutes each other with each other's form for speculation turns not to itself till it hath travelled and is mirrored there where it may see itself this is not strange at all i do not strain at the position it is familiar 
but at the author's drift who in his circumstance expressly proves that no man is lord of anything though in and of him there be much consisting till he communicate his parts to others nor doth he of himself know them for aught till he behold them formed in the applause where they are extended who like an arch reverberate their voice again or like a gate of steel fronting the sun receives and renders back his figure and his heat i was much wrapped in this and apprehended here immediately the unknown ajax heavens what a man is there a very horse that has he knows not what nature what things there are most abject in regard and dear in use what things again most dear in the esteem and poor in worth now shall we see to-morrow an act that very chance doth throw upon him ajax renowned oh heavens what some men do what some men leave to do how some men creep in skittish fortune's hall whilst others play the idiots in her eyes how one man eats into another's pride while pride is fasting in his wantonness to see these grecian lords why even already they clap the lubber ajax on the shoulder as if his foot were on brave hector's breast and great troy shrieking i do believe it for they passed by me as misers do by beggars neither gave to me good word nor look what are my deeds forgot time hath my lord a wallet at his back wherein he puts arms for oblivion a great-sized monster of ingratitudes those scraps are good deeds past which are devoured as fast as they are made forgot as soon as done perseverance dear my lord keeps honour bright to have done is to hang quite out of fashion like a rusty mail in monumental mockery take the instant away for honour travels in a strait so narrow where one but goes abreast keep then the path for emulation hath a thousand sons that one by one pursue if you give way or hedge aside from the direct forthright like to an entered tide they all rush by and leave you hindermost or like a gallant horse fallen in first rank lie there for pavement the abject rear or her run and trampled on then what they do in present though less than yours in past must overtop yours for time is like a fashionable host that slightly shakes his parting guest by the hand and with his arms outstretched as he would fly grasps in the comer the welcome ever smiles, and farewell goes out sighing. Uh, let not virtue seek remuneration for the thing it was. For beauty, wit, high birth, vigour of bone, desert in service, love, friendship, charity, are subjects all to envious and calumniating time. One touch of nature makes the whole world kin that all with one consent praise new-born gods though they are made and moulded of things past and give to dust that is a little guilt more law than guilt o'er dusted the present eye praises the present object then marvel not thou great and complete man that all the greeks begin to worship ajax since things in motion sooner catch the eye than what stirs not the cry went once on thee and still it might and yet it may again if thou wouldst not entomb thyself alive and case thy reputation in thy tent whose glorious deeds but in these fields of late made emulous missions amongst the gods themselves and drave great master faction of this my privacy i have strong reasons but against your privacy the reasons are more potent and heroical tis known achilles that you are in love with one of priam's daughters ha huh. known is that a wonder the providence that's in a watchful state knows almost every grain of plutus gold finds bottom in the uncomprehensive deeps keeps place with thought and almost like the gods do thoughts unveil in their dumb cradles there is a mystery with whom relation durst never meddle in the soul of state 
which hath an operation more divine than breath or pen can give expression to. All the commerce that you have had with Troy, as perfectly as ours as yours, my lord, and better would it fit Achilles much to throw down Hector than Polyxena. But it must grieve young Pyrrhus now at home, when fame shall in our island sound her trump, and all the Greekish girls shall tripping sing, Great Hector's sister did Achilles win, but our great Ajax bravely be down him. Farewell, my lord. I, as your lover speak, the fool slides o'er the ice that you should break. Exit. To this effect, Achilles, have I moved you. A woman, impudent and mannish grown, is not more loath than an effeminate man in time of action. I stand condemned for this. They think my little stomach to the war, and your great love to me restrains you thus. Sweet, rouse yourself, and the weak wanton Cupid shall from your neck unloose his amorous fold, and like a dewdrop from the lion's mane be shook to air. Shall Ajax fight with Hector? Ay, and perhaps receive much honour by him. I see my reputation is at stake. My fame is shrewdly gored. Oh, then beware. Those wounds heal ill that men do give themselves. Omission to do what is necessary seals a commission to a blank of danger, and danger, like an ague, subtly taints, even then when they sit idly in the sun. Go call Thyrsides hither, sweet Patroclus. I'll send the fool to Ajax, and desire him to invite the Trojan lords, after the combat, to see us here unarmed. I have a woman's longing, an appetite that I am sick withal, to see great Hector in his weeds of peace, to talk with him, and to behold his visage, even to my full of view. Enter Thersites. A labor saved. <laughs> a wonder! What? Ajax goes up and down the field asking for himself. How so? He must fight singly tomorrow with Hector, and is so prophetically proud of an heroical cudgeling that he raves in saying nothing. <laughs> How can that be? Why, a stalks up and down like a peacock, a stride at a stand, ruminates like an hostess that hath no arithmetic but her brain to set down her reckoning, bites his lip with a politic regard, as who should say, there were wit in this head and twit out, and so there is, but it lies as coldly in him as fire in a flint which will not show without knocking. The man's undone for ever, for if Hector break not his neck of the combat, he'll break himself in vain glory. <laughs> <laughs> he knows not me. I said, Good morrow, Ajax, and he replies, Thanks, Agamemnon. What think you of this man that takes me for the general? He's grown a very landfish, languageless, a monster, a plague of opinion. A man may wear it on both sides like leather jerkin. Thou must be my ambassador to him, Thersites. Who I? Why, he'll answer nobody. He professes not answering. Speaking is for beggars. He wears his tongue in his arms. I will put on his presence. Let Patroclus make his demands to me. You shall see the pageant of Ajax. To him, Patroclus. Tell him I humbly desire the valiant Ajax to invite the most valorous Hector to come unarmed to my tent and to procure safe conduct for his person of the magnanimous and most illustrious, six or seven times honoured, Captain General of the Grecian Army, Agamemnon. Do this. Jove bless great Ajax. Hmm. I come from the worthy Achilles, ah. who most humbly desires you to invite Hector to his tent. Hmm and to procure safe conduct from Agamemnon. Agamemnon? Aye, my lord. Ah. What you say to it? God by you with all my heart. Your answer, sir. If tomorrow be a fair day, by eleven of the clock it will go one way or other. Howsoever, he shall pay for me ere he has me. Your answer, sir. 
fare ye well with all my heart why but he is not in this tune is he no but out of tune thus what music will be in him when hector has knocked out his brains i know not but i am sure none unless the fiddler apollo get his sinews to make catlings on come thou shalt bear a letter to him straight let me bear another to his horse for that's the more capable creature <laughs> my mind is troubled like a fountain stirred and i myself see not the bottom of it Exeunt Achilles and Patroclus. Would the fountain of your mind were clear again, that I might water an ass at it. I had rather be a tick and a sheep than such a valiant ignorance. Exit. End of Act Three. Act Four of the History of Troilus and Cressida by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Scene One Troy, a street. Enter, at one side, Aeneas and servant with a torch. At another, Paris, Deiphobus, and Tenor, Diomedes, the Grecian, and others with torches see ho who is that there it is lord aeneas is the prince there in person had i so good occasion to lie long as you prince paris nothing but heavenly business should rob my bed made of my company that's my mind too good morrow lord aeneas a valiant greek aeneas take his hand witness the process of your speech wherein you told how diomede a whole week by days did haunt you in the field health to you valiant sir during all question of the gentle truth but when i meet you armed as black defiance as heart can think or courage execute the one and other diomed embraces our bloods are now in call and so long health but when contention and occasion beat by jove i'll play the hunter for thy life with all my force pursuit and policy and thou shalt hunt a lion that will fly with his face backward in humane gentleness welcome to troy now by anchises life welcome indeed by venus hand i swear no man alive can love in such a sort the thing he means to kill more excellently we sympathize jove let aeneas live if to my sword his fate be not the glory a thousand complete courses of the sun but in mine emulous honour let him die with every joint a wound and that to-morrow we know each other well we do and long to know each other worse this is the most despiteful gentle greeting the noblest hateful love that e'er i heard of what business lord so early i was sent for to the king but why i know not his purpose meets you twas to bring this greek to calca's house and there to render him for the enfreed antinor the fair cressid let's have your company or if you please haste there before us i constantly believe or rather call my thought a certain knowledge my brother troilus lodges there to-night rouse him and give him note of our approach with the whole quality wherefore i fear we shall be much unwelcome that i assure you troilus had rather troy were born to greece than cresset born from troy there is no help the bitter disposition of the time will have it so on lord we'll follow you good morrow all exit with servant and tell me noble diomed faith tell me true even in the soul of sound good fellowship who in your thoughts deserves fair helen best myself or menelaus both alike 
he merits well to have her that doth seek her, not making any scruple of her solia. With such a hell of pain and world of charge, and you as well to keep her that defend her, not palating the taste of her dishonour with such a costly loss of wealth and friends, he, like a puling cuckold, would drink up the lees and dregs of a flat-tamed piece. You, like a lecher, out of whorish loins, are pleased to breed out your inheritors. Both merits poised, each weighs nor less nor more, but he as he the heavier for a whore. Mm. You are too bitter to your countrywoman. She's bitter to her country. Hear me, Paris, for every false drop in her body veins a Grecian's life hath sunk. For every scruple of her contaminated carrion weight a Trojan hath been slain. Since she could speak she hath not given so many good words breath as for her Greeks and Trojans suffered death. Fair Diomede, you do as chapmen do, dispraise the thing that you desire to buy. But we in silence hold this virtue well, we'll not commend what we intend to sell. Here lies our way. Exeunt. Scene two. Troy. The court of Pandarus' house. Enter Troilus and Cressida. Dear, trouble not yourself, the morn is cold. Then, sweet my lord, I'll call mine uncle down. He shall unbolt the gates. Trouble him not. To bed, to bed. Sleep kill those pretty eyes, and give a soft attachment to thy senses as infants empty of all thought. Good morrow, then. I prithee now, to bed. Are you a weary of me? O oh, Cressida, for that the busy day waked by the lark hath roused the ribald crows and dreaming night will hide her joys no longer i would not from thee <sighs> night hath been too brief beshrew the witch with venomous whites she stays as tediously as hell but flies the grasps of love with wings more momentary swift than thought you will catch cold and curse me prithee tarry you men will never tarry oh foolish cressid i might have still held off and then you would have tarried hark there's one up pandarus within what's all the doors open here it is your uncle enter pandarus a pestilence on him oh, now he will be mocking i shall have such a life how now how now how go maidenheads here you maid where's my cousin cressid go hang yourself you naughty mocking uncle you bring me to do and then you flout me too to do what to do what let us say what what have i brought you to do come come beshrew your heart you'll never be good nor suffer others ha <laughs> ha alas poor wretch ah poor capuchia has not slept to-night would he not a naughty man let it sleep a bugbear take him did i not tell you would he were knocked in the head who's that at door good uncle go and see my lord come you again into my chamber you smile and mock me as if i meant naughtily <laughs> come you are deceived i think of no such thing how earnestly they knock pray you come in i would not for half troy have you seen here exeunt troilus and cressida who's there what's the matter will you beat down the door how now what's the matter enter aeneas good morrow lord good morrow who's there my lord aeneas by my troth i knew you not what news with you so early is not prince troilus here here what should he do here come he is here my lord do not deny him it doth import him much to speak with me 
Is he here, say you? It's more than I know, I'll be sworn. For my own part, I came in late. What should he do here? Who may then? Come, come, you'll do him wrong ere you are where. You'll be so true to him to be false to him. Do not you know of him, but yet go fetch him hither. Go. Re-enter Troilus. How now? What's the matter? My lord, I scarce have leisure to salute you. My matter is so rash. There is at hand Paris, your brother, and the Ephibus, the Grecian Diomede, and our Antenor delivered to us. And for him forthwith, ere the first sacrifice, within this hour, we must give up to Diomede's hand the Lady Cressida. Is it so concluded? By Priam and the general state of Troy. They are at hand and ready to effect it. How my achievements mock me! I will go meet them. And, my lord Aeneas, we met by chance. You did not find me here. Good, good, my lord. The secrets of neighbor Pandar have not more gift in taciturnity. Exeunt Troilus and Aeneas. Is it possible? No sooner got but lost? The devil take Antinor! The young prince will go mad! A plague upon Antinor! I would they had broke his neck! Re enter Cressida. How now? What's the matter? Who was here? Uh, uh, Why sigh you so profoundly? Where's my lord? Gone? Tell me, sweet uncle, what's the matter? Uh, would I were as deep under the earth as I am above? Oh, the gods! What's the matter? Pray thee, get thee in. Would thou hadst ne'er been born, I knew thou wouldst be his death. Oh, poor gentleman, you have plague upon Antinor. Good uncle, I beseech you, on my knees I beseech you, what's the matter? <sighs> thou must be gone, wench, thou must be gone. Thou art changed for Antinor. Thou must to thy father, and be gone from Troilus. Twill be his death, twill be his bane. He cannot bear it. Oh, you immortal gods, I will not go. Thou must. I will not, uncle. I have forgot my father. I know no touch of consanguinity, no kin, no love, no blood, no soul so near me as the sweet Troilus. Oh, you gods divine! Make Cressid's name the very crown of falsehood if ever she leave Troilus. Time, force, and death do to this body what extremes you can, but the strong base and building of my love is as the very centre of the earth, drawing all things to it. <sighs> I'll go in and weep. <sighs> do, do. Tear my bright hair and scratch my praised cheeks crack my clear voice with sobs and break my heart with sounding troilus i will not go from troy exeunt scene three troy a street before pandarus house enter paris troilus aeneas deiphobus antina and diomedes it is great morning, and the hour prefixed for her delivery to this valiant Greek comes fast upon us. Good my brother Troilus, tell you the lady what she is to do, and haste her to the purpose. Walk into her house. I'll bring her to the Grecian presently. And tis hand when I deliver her, think it an altar, and thy brother Troilus a priest, there offering to it his own heart. Exit. I know what tis to love, and would, as I shall pity, I could help. Please you, 
walk in my lords exeunt scene four troy pandarus house enter pandarus and cressida be moderate be moderate <laughs> why tell you me of moderation the grief is fine full perfect that i taste and violenteth in a sense as strong as that which causes it how can i moderate it if i could temporize with my affections or brew it to a weak and colder palate the like allayment could i give my grief my love admits no qualifying dross no more my grief in such a precious loss enter troilus here here he comes sweet ducks cressida embracing him oh, troilus troilus what pair of spectacles is here let me embrace too oh heart as the goodly saying is oh heart heavy heart why sighest thou without breaking where he answers again because thou canst not ease thy smart by friendship nor by speaking there never was a truer rhyme let us cast away nothing for we may live to have need of such a verse we see it we see it how now lambs crested i love thee in so strained a purity that the blessed gods as angry with my fancy more bright in zeal than the devotion which cold lips blow to their deities take thee from me have the gods envy ay 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 tis too plain a case and is it true that i must go from troy <sighs> hateful truth what and from troilus too from troy and troilus is it possible and suddenly where injury of chance puts back leave-taking jostles roughly by all time of pause rudely beguiles our lips of all rejoinder forcibly prevents our locked embrasures strangles our dear vows even in the birth of our own labouring breath we too that with so many thousand sighs did buy each other must poorly sell ourselves with the rude brevity and discharge of one injurious time now with a robber's haste crams his rich thievery up he knows not how as many farewells as be stars in heaven with distinct breath and consigned kisses to them he fumbles up into a loose adieu and scans us with a single famished kiss distasted with the salt of broken tears aeneas within my lord is the lady ready hark you are called some say the genius cries so to him that instantly must die bid them have patience she shall come anon where are my tears rain to lay this wind or my heart will be blown up by my throat exit i must then to the grecians no remedy a woeful cresset amongst the merry greeks when shall we see again hear me my love be thou but true of heart ay true how now what wicked deem is this nay we must use expostulation kindly for it is parting from us i speak not be thou true as fearing thee for i will throw my glove to death himself that there is no maculation in thy heart but be thou true say i to fashion in my sequent protestation be thou true and i will see thee oh you shall be exposed my lord to dangers as infinite as imminent but i'll be true and i'll grow friend with danger wear this sleeve and you this glove when shall i see you i will corrupt the grecian sentinels to give thee nightly visitation but yet be true oh heavens 
be true again hear why i speak it love the grecian youths are full of quality their loving well composed with gifts of nature flowing and swelling o'er with arts and exercise how novelty may move and parts with person alas a kind of godly jealousy which i beseech you call a virtuous sin makes me afeard oh heavens you love me not die i a villain then in this i do not call your faith in question so mainly as my merit i cannot sing nor heal the high lavolt nor sweeten talk nor play at subtle games fair virtues all to which the grecians are most prompt and pregnant but i can tell that in each grace of these there lurks a still and dumb discursive devil that tempts most cunningly but be not tempted do you think i will no but something may be done that we will not and sometimes we are devils to ourselves when we will tempt the frailty of our powers presuming on their changeful potency aeneas within nay good my lord come kiss and let us part paris within brother troilus good brother come you hither and bring aeneas and the grecian with you my lord will you be true who i alas it is my vice my fault whilst others fish with craft or great opinion i with great truth catch mere simplicity whilst some with cunning gild their copper crowns with truth and plainness i do wear mine bare fear not my truth the moral of my wit is plain and true there's all the reach of it enter aeneas paris and tenor deiphobus and diomedes welcome sir diomede here is the lady which for antina we deliver you at the port lord i'll give her to thy hand and by the way possess thee what she is and treat her fair and by my soul fair greek if e'er thou stand at mercy of my sword name cressid and thy life shall be as safe as priam is in ilion fair lady cressid so please you save the thanks this prince expects the lustre in your eye heaven in your cheek pleads your fair usage and to diomed you shall be mistress and command him wholly grecian thou dost not use me courteously to shame the zeal of my petition to thee in praising her i tell thee lord of greece she is as far high soaring o'er thy praises as thou unworthy to be called a servant i charge thee use her well even for my charge for by the dreadful pluto if thou dost not though the great bulk achilles be thy guard i'll cut thy throat oh be not moved prince troilus let me be privileged by my place and message to be a speaker free when i am hence i'll answer to my lust and know you lord i'll nothing do on charge to her own worth she shall be prized but that you say be it so i speak it in my spirit and honour no come to the port i'll tell thee diomede this brave shall oft make thee to hide thy head lady give me your hand and as we walk to our own selves bend we our needful talk exeunt troilus cressida and diomedes sound trumpet hark hector's trumpet how have we spent this morning the prince must think me tardy and remiss that swore to ride before him to the field tis troilus fault come come to field with him let us make ready straight yea with the bridegroom's fresh alacrity let us address to tend on hector's heels the glory of our troy doth this day lie on his fair worth and single chivalry Exeunt. scene five 
the Grecian camp, lists set out. Enter Ajax, armed. Agamemnon, Achilles, Patroclus, Menelaus, Ulysses, Nestor, and others. Here art thou in appointment fresh and fair, anticipating time with starting courage. Give with thy trumpet a loud note to Troy, thou dreadful Ajax, that the appalled air may pierce the head of the great combatant, and hail him hither. Thou trumpet, there's my purse. Now crack thy lungs and split thy brazen pipe. Blow, villain, till thy feared by his cheek outswell the colic of puffed aquilon. Come stretch thy chest and let thy eyes spout blood. Thou blowest for Hector. Trumpet sounds. No trumpet answers. Tis but early days. Is not young Diomed with Calchas' daughter? Tis he. I ken the manner of his gait. He rises on the toe. That spirit of his in aspiration lifts him from the earth. Enter Diomedes and Cressida. Is this the Lady Cressid? Even she. Most dearly welcome to the Greeks, sweet lady. Our general doth salute you with a kiss. Yet is the kindness but particular. T'were better she were kissed in general. And very courtly counsel. I'll begin. So much for Nister. I'll take that winter from your lips, fair lady. Achilles bids you welcome. <laughs> I had a good argument for kissing once. But that's no argument for kissing now, for thus popped Paris in his hardiment, and parted thus you and your argument. O oh, deadly Gaul, and theme of all our scorns, for which we lose our heads to gild his horns. The first was Menelaus' kiss, this mine. Patroclus kisses you. Oh, this is trim. Paris and I kiss evermore for him. I'll have my kiss, sir. Lady, by your leave. In kissing, do you render or receive? Both take and give. I'll make my match to live. The kiss you take is better than you give. Therefore, no kiss. I'll give you boot. I'll give you three for one. <laughs> you are an odd man. Give even or give none. An odd man, lady. Every man is odd. No, Paris is not. For you know it is true that you are odd, and he is even with you. You fillip me of the head. No, I'll be sworn. It were no match, your nail against his horn. May I, sweet lady, beg a kiss of you? You may. I do desire it. Why, beg then. Why then, for Venus' sake, give me a kiss when Helen is a maid again, and his. I am your debtor. Claim it when tis due. Never's my day and then a kiss of you lady a word i'll bring you to your father exit with cressida a woman of quick sense fie fie upon her there's language in her eye her cheek her lip nay her foot speaks her wanton spirits look out at every joint and motive of her body Oh, these encounters so glib of tongue that give a coasting welcome ere it comes, and wide unclasp the tables of their thoughts to every tickling reader. Set them down for sluttish spoils of opportunity and daughters of the game. Trumpet within. The Detroit's trumpet. Yonder comes the troop. Enter Hector, armed. Aeneas, Troilus, Paris, Deiphobus, and other Trojans with attendants. Hail, all you state of Greece! What shall be done to him that victory commands? 
or do you purpose a victor shall be known will you the knights shall to the edge of all extremity pursue each other or shall be divided by any voice or order of the field hector bade ask which way would hector have it he cares not he'll obey conditions tis done like hector but securely done a little proudly and great deal misprising the knight opposed if not achilles sir what is your name if not achilles nothing therefore achilles but whatever know this in the extremity of great and little valour and pride excel themselves in hector the one almost as infinite as all the other blank as nothing weigh him well and that which looks like pride is courtesy this ajax is half made of hector's blood in love whereof half hector stays at home half heart half hand half hector comes to seek this splendid knight half trojan and half greek a maiden battle then oh i perceive you re-enter diomedes here is sir diomed go gentle knight stand by our ajax as you and lord aeneas consent upon the order of their fight so be it either to the uttermost or else a breath the combatants being kin half stints their strife before their strokes begin ajax and hector enter the lists they are opposed already what trojan is that same that looks so heavy the youngest son of priam a true knight not yet mature yet matchless firm of word speaking in deeds and deedless in his tongue not soon provoked nor being provoked soon calmed his heart and hand both open and both free for what he has he gives what things he shows yet gives he not till judgment guide his bounty nor dignifies an impure thought with breath manly as hector but more dangerous for hector in his blaze of wrath subscribes to tent objects but he in heat of action is more vindictive than jealous love they call him troilus and on him erect a second hope as fairly built as hector thus says aeneas one that knows the youth even to his inches and with private soul did in great ilion thus translate him to me alarum hector and ajax fight they are in action no ajax hold thy own hector thou sleep'st awake thee his blows are well disposed there ajax trumpets cease you must know more princes enough so please you ah, i am not warm yet let us fight again as hector pleases <sighs> why then i will no more thou art great lord my father's sister's son a cousin german to great priam's seed the obligation of our blood forbids a gory emulation twixt us twain were thy commixtion greek and trojan so that thou couldst say this hand is grecian all and this is trojan the sinews of this leg all greek and this all troy my mother's blood runs on the dexter cheek and this sinister bounds in my father's by jove's multipotent thou shouldst not bear from me a greekish member wherein my sword had not impression made of our rank feud but the just gods gainsay that any drop thou borrowedst from thy mother my sacred aunt should by my mortal sword be drained let me embrace thee ajax by him that thunders thou hast lusty arms hector would have them fall upon him thus cousin all honour to thee ah thank thee hector thou art too gentle and too free a man i came to kill thee cousin and bear hence a great addition earned in thy death not neoptolemus so mirable 
on whose bright crest fame with her loudest oyes cries this is he could promise to himself a thought of added honour torn from hector there is expectance here from both the sides what further you will do we'll answer it the issue is embracement ajax farewell if i might in entreaties find success as seld i have the chance i would desire my famous cousin to our grecian tents tis agamemnon's wish and great achilles doth long to see unarmed the valiant hector aeneas call my brother troilus to me and signify this loving interview to the expectors of our troyan part desire them home give me thy hand my cousin i will go eat with thee and see your knights agamemnon and the rest of the greeks come forward great agamemnon comes to meet us here the worthiest of them tell me name by name but for achilles my own searching eye shall find him by his large and portly size worthy all arms as welcome as to one that would be rid of such an enemy but that's no welcome understand more clear what's past and what's to come is strewed with husks and formless ruin of oblivion but in this extent moment faith and troth strained purely from all hollow bias drawing bids thee with most divine integrity from heart of very heart great hector welcome i thank thee most imperious agamemnon agamemnon to troilus my well-famed lord of troy no less to you let me confirm my princely brother's greeting you brace of warlike brothers welcome hither who must we answer the noble menelaus o oh, you my lord by mars his gauntlet thanks mock not that i affect the untraded oath your quantum wife swears still by venus glove she's well but bid me not commend her to you name her not now sir she's a deadly theme oh pardon i offend i have thou gallant troyan seen thee oft labouring for destiny make cruel way through ranks of greekish youth and i have seen thee as hot as perseus spur thy phrygian steed despising many forfeits and subjuments when thou hast hung thy advanced sword in the air not letting it decline on the declined that i have said to some my standers by lo jupiter is yonder dealing life and i have seen thee pause and take thy breath when that a ring of greeks have shrapped thee in like an olympian wrestling this have i seen but this thy countenance still locked in steel i never saw till now i knew thy grandsire and once fought with him he was a soldier good but by great mars the captain of us all never like thee oh let an old man embrace thee and worthy warrior welcome to our tents tis the old nestor let me embrace thee good old chronicle that hast so long walked hand in hand with time most reverend nestor i am glad to clasp thee i would my arms could match thee in contention as they contend with thee in courtesy i would they could ha by this white beard i'd fight with thee to-morrow well welcome welcome i have seen the time i wonder now how yonder city stands when we have here her base and pillar by us i know your favour lord ulysses well ah sir there's many a greek and troyan dead since first i saw yourself and diomede in ilion on your greekish embassy sir i foretold you then what would ensue my prophecy is but half his journey yet for yonder walls that pertly front your town yon towers whose wanton tops do bust the clouds must kiss their own feet i must not believe you there they stand yet and modestly i think the fall of every phrygian stone will cost a drop of grecian blood the end crowns all 
and that old common arbitrator time will one day end it so to him we leave it most gentle and most valiant hector welcome after the general i beseech you next to feast with me and see me at my tent i shall forestall thee lord ulysses thou now hector i have fed mine eyes on thee i have with exact view perused thee hector and quoted joint by joint is this achilles i am achilles stand fair i prithee let me look on thee behold thy fill nay i have done already thou art too brief i will the second time as i would buy thee view thee limb by limb oh like a book of sport thou'lt read me o'er but there's more in me than thou understand'st why dost thou so oppress me with thine eye tell me you heavens in which part of his body shall i destroy him whether there or there or there that i may give the local wound a name and make distinct the very breach whereout hector's great spirit flew answer me heavens it would discredit the blessed gods proud man to answer such a question stand again thinkst thou to catch my life so pleasantly as to predominate in nice conjecture where thou wilt hit me dead i tell thee yea wert thou an oracle to tell me so i'd not believe thee henceforth guard thee well for i'll not kill thee there nor there nor there but by the forge that stithied mars his helm i'll kill thee everywhere yea or and or ye wisest grecians pardon me this brag his insolence draws folly from my lips but i'll endeavour deeds to match these words or may i never uh, do not chafe thee cousin and you achilles let these threats alone till accident or purpose bring you toot you may have every day enough of hector if you have stomach the general state i fear can scarce entreat you to be odd with him i pray you let us see you in the field we have held pelting wars since you refused the grecian's cause dost thou entreat me hector to-morrow do i meet thee fell as death to-night all friends thy hand upon that match first all you peers of greece go to my tent there in the full convive we afterwards at hector's leisure and your bounty shall concur together severally entreat him beat loud the tambourines let the trumpets blow then this great soldier may his welcome know exeunt all but troilus and ulysses my lord ulysses tell me i beseech you in what place of the field doth calchas keep at menelaus tent as princely troilus there diomede doth feast with him to-night who neither looks upon the heaven nor earth but gives all gaze and bent of amorous view on the fair crescent shall i sweet lord be bound to you so much after we part from agamemnon's tent to bring me thither you shall commend me sir as gentle tell me of what honour was this crescent on troy had she no lover there that wails her absence o oh, sir to such as boasting show their scars a mock is due will you walk on my lord she was beloved she loved she is and doth but still sweet love is food for fortune's tooth exeunt end of act four